Welcome to step 4 of making a top-down adventure game in Pico 8. In this step we'll get the camera following the player. If you just started Pico 8, you'll need to load your game. Once it's loaded, hit escape and we'll get started. This step requires just three lines of code, but they might be a bit confusing, so let's take a minute to understand a couple concepts first. Let's look at this visually. Look at what's going on here. We have a bunch of shapes being drawn at specific pixel coordinates. Then we have the Pico 8 camera function. The camera function simply takes an XY coordinate and tells Pico 8, show me 128 pixels wide and 128 pixels tall starting at this XY position. See what happens when we move the camera around? We're just telling Pico 8, show me 128 pixels by 128 pixels starting at these pixel coordinates. We're not changing the shapes we draw, we're not changing where they're drawn, we're just changing where Pico 8 draws them on the screen by changing where the camera is. By default, Pico 8 draws the camera starting at 0, 0, and if you never use the camera function, that won't change. But we are using the camera function because we want the camera to follow our player around our map. The trick is knowing what x and y coordinates to give the camera function so that it stays with our player. To figure that out, we need to do a cool math trick. To keep the camera following the player from map screen to map screen, we need to know which map tile should be in the top left of the screen. In this example here, the flashing yellow tile is the tile the player is at, and the flashing orange tile is the tile that should be in the top left of the screen. You can see as our player moves around the map, the tile in the top left of the screen should change too. But how do we know which tile should be in the top left? That's where the math trick comes in. First, we divide the player's x and y coordinates by 16. That gives us a number with a lot of decimal places. So we round it down to get rid of the decimal places, which gives us a nice round number. Then we take that round number and multiply it by 16. Watch the numbers as we move the player around the map. You'll see how the math always works out to tell us which tile should be in the top left corner of the screen. It's okay if you don't totally get how this math trick works, as long as you understand that it is giving us consistent results every time to always give us the map tile in the top left of the screen. The last step is to take that top left map tile coordinate and turn it into a pixel coordinate so we can give it to the camera function. That's easy because map tiles are 8 pixels wide, so we just multiply the map coordinate by 8 to get the pixel coordinate. And that's it. That's how we get the camera following the player. It's just a simple math trick to find out the top left map tile and then tell the camera to start drawing the screen with that tile in the corner. Back to our code, we'll put this in the draw map function. Again, it's only three lines of code, but you can see they do a lot. Here's the code. The FLR, or floor function, takes a number and rounds it down to the nearest whole number. With this code, the map X and map Y variables will always hold the map coordinates of the tile that's in the top left corner of the screen. Keeping those coordinates around will be useful again later. So let's run it. Let's save the game with Control S and run it with Control R. And there we go. Now our player can walk off the edge of the screen and we don't have to worry. Now that we can move all around our game world, we need some things we can interact with. In the next step, we'll start by adding keys to our game. 